So the competency-based curriculum was geared towards revolutionizing how education was delivered to learners. It was intended to create a shift from comprehension and the struggle to pass exams to acquisition of competencies. 2023 marked the sixth year since the introduction of the CBC, but the new dawn is yet to be fully realized. Tonight, Safin Aching Ouma takes a look at the major concerns raised about junior secondary school as the second cohort is expected in class in January. A new dawn in education is part of what was tacked in the competency-based curriculum, a promise that was aimed at bridging the inequality gap in access to education where no learner would be left behind. About six years since its introduction, the CBC promise has been choked by a myriad of challenges. The first cohort of learners joined junior school in 2023 with the government affirming constantly that all was on course. I wish to assure the country that we are fully prepared and committed to a seamless transition from the 844 uh, system to the CPC. But as the schools closed after third term, how much was achieved in junior school? The Kenyan child is, uh, is being dumped because there's no learning that is taking place in this junior school. If at all the government was not ready to implement the CBC curriculum, why would it not remain with the 844 system that people were used to? The dilemma over whether the status quo will be sustained come 2024 remains. If the recent threats by junior school intern teachers is anything to go by, in the weeks preceding to the end of the year, the country was treated to unfortunate scenes of protests staged by junior school teachers who have vowed to boycott work in January unless they are employed on permanent and pensionable terms. The JSS tutors also dismissed the 17,000 shilling salary they get as peanuts. The GSS teachers who are senior has to be confirmed because they cannot be sacrificed, yet other people who graduated in the year 2023 July are employed under permanent and pensionable terms. Of greater concern is also the admission by the teachers who ought to be the key drivers of the success of CBC that they are ill-prepared to effectively tackle the learning areas. These teachers are teaching what they never specialized in. Exactly. A humanity teacher teaching integrated science that combines uh, chemistry, physics and uh, biology. How do you expect that teacher to deliver? There is no way you expect an art teacher to teach mathematics. True. There is no way you expect a science teacher to teach Kiswahili. All graduates normally train 202 teaching subjects. Aita, maths and business education, history and theory or English and literature and so on and so on. So these teachers have not been trained to one or the 14 areas which are found in the JSS. Some of the mess we have in implementation of CPC has been premised on a notion that teachers are already trained as teachers and that all they need in this CBC transition is a reorientation. So that if you take them away for a weekend and tell them now you're not going to be teaching the way you've been teaching, you're going to teach in a new way and that that is sufficient. That notion was wrong. The human resource concerns coming amidst a fast-paced race against time for schools to ensure that they meet the threshold of the infrastructural requirements to successfully deliver the CBC promise. We have an aspiration in CBC to say we want 60% of the learners transitioning to senior school to transition into STEM courses. And those schools don't have labs. The teachers who are there are just struggling with, uh, in fact, they have nothing. I don't even know how they, how they are teaching. Because without repertories, how do they cut out the practicals? The hiccups have reignited a spark on the debate over whether to domicile JSS in primary or secondary schools. The original intention was to have JSS in secondary. And that's where we had all new class, 10,000 new classrooms being built in secondary. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there will be any crisis. 
The classrooms are there already. The teachers are already there. Science teachers are already there in the secondary schools. The laboratories are already there. In fact, and if it's a question of cost, it's even more expensive having to build 23,000 new laboratories in the primary schools when we already have laboratories in the secondary schools. We have to plan that at some point we will have a junior school that is distinct from senior school and is distinct from primary school. In the event that we are not able to do that, junior school should be what was the O level in the old system. So it should be part of secondary school. Questions also abound over the high stakes in grade 6 Kenya primary education assessment for an exam which Usawa Agenda Executive Director Emmanuel Manyasa terms as only a means of assessing the learner's progress. The Presidential Working Party report talks about 20% of the marks that children get in CAPSE should be able to be used in transitioning them to senior school. I don't understand that. How many of us were serious when we were 12? First, I don't know the, the meaning for, for CAPSE. It shouldn't exist. It's just a waste of public funds. It should be such a low level assessment, just like what we do in grade three. That is what we need at grade six, not a national exam that people fly in choppers to inspect and spend billions that will have been used to hire teachers. And with the second cohort expected to join junior school in January 2024, are there any lessons learned? We had not been prepared for the first cohort and now the second cohort is coming in without us planning how we will make sure that the numbers we are piling in junior school are actually going to be meaningful in terms of the quality of learning that happens at that level. Amidst these growing concerns, CS Machogu insisted that the CBC train has already left the station, sustaining his dismissal of claims that the government was ill-prepared for this transition. Many of the issues that were clear in this transition process up to last year have now been solved through the Presidential Working Party on Education Reform report. The competency-based curriculum was introduced in Kenya in 2017 with the first batch of learners commencing on it in January 2018 when they were in grade three. Several years since its rollout, stakeholders opine that it is never too late to go back to the drawing board just so the country can get it right. I wish the government could stop burying their heads in the sand so that we address the issues affecting the quality of running which is going on in our schools. If at all we are serious with quality education. We need to just get serious. We, we, we know what our problems are. We have solutions within us. I don't know whether there are people who don't like these problems resolved. I don't know whether there are people who profit from the mess uh, that to me looks like is being created deliberately. I don't know uh, why there is so much pull and push around issues that should be obvious that just require logical thinking for all of us to say this is the right way to go. As the back and forth over the competency-based curriculum continues, what is clear is that the train has already left the station. The second cohort of junior secondary school learners will be joining their peers in January 2024, prompting the need for urgent interventions to deliver the CBC promise sooner rather than later. Safin Aching Oma, Citizen TV.